Hello all and today we will look into the interview question. A unsorted array is given. We need to find kth largest element. So let's understand this uh, question with an example. Let's suppose if input sequence is like this and if k equal to 4 which means we need to find fourth largest element. So output would be 6. Similarly in the same input sequence if k equal to 3 then output would be 8 right. Before you start looking into the solution part we would recommend you to pause this video right now and you can try yourself first. We can solve this problem in many ways and we will see all these methods one by one. So let's see our first method. In this method, we would be using bubble and selection sort. So if you would have observed bubble and selection sort very closely, so what happened at any given point of time, our input array will be divided into two parts. One part we do call unsorted group and on this group only we do execute our algorithm. And the second group is mainly sorted group. We do push maximum element of this unsorted group towards the last position of unsorted group and after that that element will be joining to the sorted group. So after each and every iteration size of the sorted group will get increased by 1 and on other side the size of unsorted group will be decreased by 1. If input size is n then after iteration 1 we will be having total n minus 1 element in our unsorted group. And one element will be in sorted group. And this one element will be the maximum element of this input sequence. Similarly, if you go for the second iteration, so one maximum element will be shifting from here to here. That means the size of this unsorted group will be n minus 2. And the size of the sorted group will be 2, where we will be having a two largest element of the input sequence. So, like that, if we iterate k times, then we will be having n minus k elements in this unsorted group, k elements in sorted group. And after achieving that, we can simply return the elements value which recently got transferred from here to here. So let's understand this whole scenario again with the example. Let's suppose our input sequence is this and our k value is 3. Let's assume if we are using a bubble sort and to get third largest element from the input sequence, we have to iterate 3 times. So let's do that. So after iteration 1, our input sequence will be like this where unsorted group will have all these elements starting from 8 to 4 and the maximum element was 13. So 13 we found here in the last position in unsorted group. Similarly, now uh, we will iterate second times and now our algorithm will be executing on this element starting from 8 to 4. And uh, again, the maximum element of this unsorted group is 9. So 9 will be reaching the last position of this group. So after iteration 2, our output will be this where unsorted group is now starting from 6 to 4. And these two elements is part of sorted group. And after iteration 2, we will be finding out the second largest element of the input sequence, which is 9. But we have to iterate 3 times. So we have to go for the next iteration. The maximum element of unsorted group is 8. So after iteration 3, our sequence will be like this, where we have unsorted elements starting from 5 to 4. And these are the sorted elements, where we found our third largest element, which is 8 here. And now let's calculate the time complexity of this algorithm. So just because here we are iterating k times and every iterations we are going to n elements. So total time complexity would be order of b, o and k. And if you talk about the space complexity, then as we know that bubble and selection sort is in place sorting algorithm. And just because of that, the space complexity would be constant. Now let's quickly go through the second method, which is a sorting method. So what we do here is we do use any good sorting algorithm, algorithm like merge, heap or quick sort. And we do sort our input sequence in decreasing order. And after sorting, our kth largest element will be there at k minus 1 index position. So after sorting, our input sequence will be like this. And let's say if we are uh, finding out fourth largest element, that means our fourth largest element will be there at third index value, which is 6 here. Then what we have to do, we have to simply return 3 in this case, right? Similarly, if k is equal to 2, then we have to return one index value. And now let's see the time complexity of this uh, method. So as you can see the table over here. So here um, the merge sort will be having a n log n time complexity throughout all the cases, average case, best case and worst case. Similarly for the heap sort. So heap sort also will be taking n log n time complexity. But in the quick sort, it will be n log n for only for average case and a base case. But if it is a worst case, then it will be taking an n square. And now let's see the space complexity of this. So if we are using a more sort, then the space complexity would be order of n. 
and if you're using a heap sort then it will not take anything extra space and because of that it will be a constant space complexity and quick sort for average and best case it will be taking maximum o of log n and why log n just because of the recursive call uh, it will be using a stack not heap and for the worst case it can extend till order of o of n now let's look into our next method which is a max heap method and in this basically we have to follow two steps in first step we have to build a max heap to build max heap we are going to use a max heapify algorithm and then second step is we need to extract the root value and just because this is the max heap so root value will be having always a maximum element so this two step we need to keep on doing till k times and at k times whatever the value we are about to extract from the root value that value we have to return that will be our keep largest element of the input sequence so let's see every step in details one by one so as we know that in complete binary we have a left child and the right child and the parent node so similarly we have to convert this array into complete binary tree so how are you gonna do that let's see before that let's mark this index value so for any elements value which is there at ith index the left child should be there at 2i plus 1 position and the right child should be there at 2i plus 2 position where i value should start from 0 and it can go till and by 2 floor value minus 1 so we will start from index value 0 which is 8 8 left child will be the value which is there at 1 index if you put i equal to 0 then 2i plus 1 is nothing but 1 so 13 will be the left child and 6 will be the right child now we will increment our i value by 1 which is 13 here so 13's left child will be if you put 2i plus 1 so this is 3 so the left child of 13 will be 5 and the right child will be 9 similarly for 6 so 6 will have a left child 1 and right child will be 4 so well then we have constructed binary tree out of this array and remember this we are not using um, any extra space to build this uh, this relationship we have built on top of the input array itself so for easy understanding what we have done we have created a tree structure like this on here itself where this is a left and this is a right Again, this is a left, this is a right, this is left, this is right. Now to build a max heap, we need to apply max heapify algorithm on every non-leaves node. So what is that and how we are gonna do that? Let's discuss this. So max heapify will start from i equal to n by two floor value minus one and it will go till zero. And after that, what the first thing we need to do? We need to check if the parent's value is a lesser than its child value or not. If that hold true, then we have to do a swapping. So for every non-lives node, we we need to maintain this kind of relationship. So now let's start doing a max epify on our tree. And is nothing but here is seven. So I should be floor value three point five minus one, which is two. So we need to start from two here. Six is greater than one and four. This subtree is max epified already. So we don't have to do anything. Now we'll check on this subtree so let's say 13 so 13 is greater than both 5 and 9 so this subtree is also maxified we don't have to do anything here now we will decrease our i value here and now we will checking that maxify property on this subtree so here 8 is not greater than its child value so the maximum of this child value which is 13 so we need to swap this 8 with 13 so after swapping 13 will be here and 8 will be here and as soon as we do any swapping then we now we need to check whether uh, this subtree now this subtree is still maintaining um, a max epify property or not so here now if you see this 8 is not greater than its child value that means now we need to swap this 8 with a 9 okay so here this subtree is maxified here uh, this also is maxified and 13 is also maxified and here our step one process is over now let's come to our second step after doing step one our input array will look like this okay in step two what we need to do we need to extract root value which is 13 it's mean that we need to take this 13 and we need to swap with last value of this unsorted group so now 13 will be get exchanged with the last element of this group which is 4 right so after first attraction our input array should look like this 
our unsorted group part is starting from 1 to 4 and if you see our tree structure so our tree will look like this and here we have removed our last node value why just because that uh, value is part of the sorted group so again we have to follow this max cp5 now our n value is 6 so i value should be starting from 6 by 2 floor value minus 1 which is 2 so it will go from 2 to 0 so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 right so we will start from here so we need to check on this subtree 6 is uh, greater than 1 uh, fine it is already max cp5 now we will check this 9 5 8 it is already max cp5 and now we will check this subtree so 4 is lesser than its child value so we need to swap this 4 with a 9 okay so after swapping 9 will come here and 4 will be here so that means now we need to check this subtree whether it is maintaining our uh, max cp5 property or not which is not just because 4 is lesser than 5 and 8 after swapping our tree will look like this and if you see uh, the array structure of this so it should look like this so this uh, we'll keep on doing uh, till kth time so if you have seen that in the first uh, time iteration uh, we have uh, uh, got our the largest value uh, out of this input sequence and similarly if we'll go for the second time extraction value then we'll get the second largest element value and similarly, if we wanted to find out kth largest uh, element value, then we have to extract the root value k times. In the same example, if let's say our k is equal to 2, so we have uh, done iteration one time already. Now we need to extract the max value from here. So let's do that. So after extracting max value, 9 will be coming here and 1 will be jumping at the first position, right? So as soon as we do that, we can re return this element value. And now let's calculate time taken by each of these steps. So in step one, what we are doing, we are building a max heap. Uh, it may look like uh, the time competitive by this, like n log n. And why? Just because we are doing heapify uh, for each and every node. And um, every heapify will take log n. But when you do a tight analysis of this, then you will find out that <clears throat> instead of taking n log n, it will take linear time, order of n. And let's prove this point here. Let's consider if we have a binary tree structures like this. So what is the height of this tree? It's 3, right? So here height is 0, here height is 1, here height is 2, and at root level height is 3. And having said that, we don't apply a uh, heapify process at the leaf node, but we do apply starting from this node. Uh, if we are doing a swiping over here, that is the only operation we have to do. Uh, what I'm trying to say that we don't have to go further and look into the uh, left subtree or right subtree to check whether you know a left subtree or right subtree is is maintaining heapify property or not but if you apply that heapify process on this node then you may have to go uh, one level down to check whether this left subtree or right subtree is maintaining uh, that heapify property or not so if you apply this heapify process on this root node then we have to go two times down right and just because of this analysis we can say that time taken by heapify process is different height to height so for one node which is there at height level h so how much time it will take to heapify order of o h and now we need to calculate for any particular height how many total node can exist so total numbers of nodes for any uh, binary tree can have n by 2 2 to the power h plus 1 uh, ceiling value and if you wanted to you know prove this point uh, you can do that so we constructed this kind of tree so in our case we have total numbers of n 15 so we have height 3 2 1 and 0 if you wanted to check at height 0 how many nodes we have 8 so let's prove this point through this formula we can put n is 15 2 to the power h is 0 plus 1 and calculate this so it will be 15 by 2 and that will be coming 7.5 this is a ceiling value, so we are coming with a 8 value. So here at this height, we can have a total 8 nodes, which is true, right? Similarly, if you wanted to see at h equal to 2, how many nodes we can have? 2. So let's see that point also. This is 15, 2 plus 1. So that will be 15 by 2 to the power 3. So this is 8 and this is nothing but 2, right? So time taken by one node, which is there at height h is oh and time taken by all nodes of height h would be n by 2 to the power h plus 1 into oh so this formula will tell us how much time we are taking at any particular height 
so if you need to find out time taken by entire tree then it should be sigma h will start from 0 and it can go till log n and by 2 to the power h plus 1 into big o h so now let's solve this equation so that can convert till o n into sigma h start from 0 to log n h by 2 to the power h just because of big o notation we can replace uh, 2 to the power h plus 1 to 2 to the power h and again just because of big o notation now we can convert this equation as in n into sigma h start from 0 to infinity so instead of going to log n we can go for infinity h by 2 to the power h so when you solve this equation this one will get convert to 2 that means this entire thing will be equal to order of big o 2n and which is nothing but order of o n so to build maxi we are taking order of n time and in step 2 after extracting value what we have to do again we have to hippify each and every node so having said that hippify will take log n time and here how many times we have to do k time so time taken by this step 2 process would be order of o k into log n so we need to sum these two timings so total time would be order of n plus k log n and now let's talk about the space complexity so space complexity is order of one constant just because we are not using any extra memory apart from the array itself rest of the solution including most efficient one we will be looking into our next part and to get there uh, you can click on the link which appears on your right side and if you have not subscribed our channel then please do click on the link which is on your left side and please do hit the bell icon as well thanks for watching and see you in the next video